program was recorded at the Apex International Convention and Expo in Las Vegas, Nevada. I am pleased to welcome Managing Editor Bob Bowman. Sometimes it seems as though there is virtually an infinite amount of software from which to choose for companies looking to increase their IT capabilities. However, it can be very difficult to understand how to make those choices, and to do that today, I'm joined by Lauren Golov, Vice President of Selection Services for Technology Evaluation Centers. Lauren, welcome to the program. Thank you for having me. Lauren, why do so many software projects fail? I guess the primary reason that so many projects fail is the lack of a structured process driving the selection activity. Um, companies underestimate the importance of the selection process and as a result it impacts significantly uh, on the ability for them to implement successfully. Well let's start from the beginning. How should a company even begin to define its needs for software? Well, I think it starts from the executive level, that uh, there has to be a clear communication to the entire company that uh, there is a selection process underway, and the right senior people need to be involved in uh, forming a decision team that would be represented by all uh, constituents within the organization. That's really the starting point. It's, it's the clear and communicated understanding that this is happening. But there are so many vendors out there, so many applications. How do you even begin to narrow down the field? Well, the first thing a company needs to do is look from the inside out. Forget about what vendors exist and what solutions exist. Understand what your needs are. Uh, and there are different ways and means to help organizations um, get through that process more comprehensively, uh, more quickly, without taking the shortcuts that they typically do, because it is an arduous process. Um, and it's the most fundamental uh, and essential process for the whole evaluation and selection activity. But if you involve all the interested parties, and I imagine that would mean people from line of business as well as from IT, uh, does that sometimes lead to some kind of conflict as to what the priorities should be and who should be controlling those purchase decisions? It can, certainly. Um, the reality is a process that uh, includes the entire uh, constituent within a, an organization where everybody has a voice is the one that will ultimately succeed more um, favorably. The ability to have everybody, <clears throat> excuse me, have a voice and be a participant in the activity uh, is a significant factor. So here's the big decision everybody has to make these days and that is between a so-called best of breed solution and something that comes from an enterprise vendor, a vendor of, say, an enterprise resource uh, planning application. Where do you come down in, in that particular controversy? Well, we don't see it as a controversy. We see it as an option. Uh, every evaluation and selection prog project should enable a decision between best of breed solutions and a fully comprehensive solution. I mean, the reality is today, a typical organization will run multiple applications. Even if they are running an enterprise resource planning uh, application, they're running others. So in a sense, they're running a best of breed mix currently. So software needs to integrate. Uh, it needs to coordinate activities with other applications, other hardware platforms. And those factors need to be taken into consideration. Give us some tips for how you can make sure that a new application integrates well with your existing IT infrastructure. Well, there's a number of ways of doing it. It's not only integrating with your current IT infrastructure, it's also integrating, if you will, with uh, existing processes and uh, ways of doing things. So one of the things that is fundamental um, in an evaluation and selection process is what we call the scripted demonstration. So this is where an organization will, based on their critical factors, their core processes, they would devise a script that script would be presented to all the vendors. So the vendors are presenting to the same script and the um, different representatives from the buying organization will be able to discern very clearly by seeing how the vendors deliver their best practice process support for those activities. And those individual subjective scores would be consolidated together, creating an unbiased, um, measurable, score that is averaged out. 
How early in the process does that script get developed and presented to the vendors? Is it all the way up at the RFP point, or is it as the implementation is happening, or when? Well, it's, it's much prior to the implementation. It's before you've um, selected, I guess, your winning vendor, certainly. I'd say the scripting uh, elements begin to be, if you will, developed or, or gathered right from the onset of the project. Um, so notes are gathered, ideas are gathered, and the script is finally prepared to be presented as part of the RFP or as um, closely aligned with when the RFP is delivered. Now it seems like so many major projects stand or fail according to the follow-up that the, the company implements. Tell us a little bit about how you can make sure that the follow-up is happening at the imp in order to ensure that the implementation is a success. Well part of our structured methodology is to make the uh, strategy, philosophy, and actual, uh, if you will, history of the implementer part of the evaluation process. So some vendors will implement directly, other vendors will work with integrator partners. Um, so it's very important to understand how, th what type of success they've had in the past um, with organizations of a similar nature within the same industry, uh, so on and so forth. So understanding these factors, both on how they implemented and how they provided maintenance and support after implementation, are very important in making a final decision. Meeting and greeting these people on a personal level and being able to connect, having people on the decision team connect with people on the delivery team is, is very significant. Uh, it provides for, you know, building the appropriate foundation, a solid foundation from which the successful implementation will um, will flourish. How important is it to have an outside integ integrator, uh, independent from the software vendor, who might advise you and help you in the implementation stage of the project? Uh, personally, I think um, if enough uh, proper representation from the organization, the buying company, is part of the process, it doesn't really matter whether the vendor is implementing directly uh, or they're working with an integrator. Sometimes working with an integrator creates uh, an additional element of potential risk because you're now dealing with another organization that has their interests at heart, which may be different from the vendor and certainly different from your own. So it really depends on the situation. Service and maintenance is such a big part of vendor revenues. It's not a surprise that they would want to uh, be as much a part of your organization going forward as they can. So can you give us some tips on how you can determine how much to involve the vendor uh, in service and maintenance uh, and, and for how long after an implementation? Certainly. I mean, every organization needs to develop a level of autonomy uh, so that they can uh, grow with the application uh, and be unencumbered by the vendor. Um, the reality is you can't live without them because they're upgrading the software, uh, they're building in best practice over time. So you need to be able to um, take advantage of that for the benefit of your organization. So what we would typically suggest is that as part of the uh, deci final decision process, you want to build a window uh, of time, three years, five years, ten years, compare the cost for supporting that software, maintenance, upgrade, support, internal services uh, or, or uh, internal activities, resources that you may require to support that and compare the vendors over time and see uh, which system costs more versus costs less and let that be part of the overall decision process. Well, Lauren, thank you so much for offering these very valuable tips on how to select the right software. Thank you very much for having me. I appreciate it. I've been speaking with Lauren Goloff of Technology Evaluation Centers. Thank you very much for watching.